Hi, I was thinking about artificial intelligence, Elon Musk, um, Darren Hassabi, Habasi, forgot his name. I read so many articles last night um, about the forthcoming problem and the possibilities of artificial intelligence. Now, this is something that I personally call automatic intelligence because there is nothing artificial about intelligence. Uh, there either is intelligence or there are there is not intelligence and um, I don't know if humanity is intelligence by definition or, or maybe we are just automatic but anyway I'll stick to the fact that we have something special and I'm biased I consider our consciousness to be something um, coming from the outside of our bodies basically uh, the brain is like an antenna you know, like a television. If you break the receiver, um, the image goes down. And if you break your head, basically, you die. Your image is lost. And in the meantime, you know, the, the brain gets bad. Now, Elon Musk has just recently um, coming, uh, has come up with his sort of neuro implants startup where he will gather scientists to sort of make this implant in our brains possible. So basically, he's saying that we now are cyborgs and that we have our thumbs and fingers as our only sort of external um, tool. And that makes us slow, but when we get all this laptop, internet, mobile possibilities directly into our head, we will become um, you know just smoother with that experience and I'm filming this in a burned down uh, nightclub I just find it soothing for this kind of topic you know we are humanity we are trying to save ourselves we are hiding in burned out nightclubs anyway um, there, is, there are some aspects about this today I also um, read about a chimera they have mixed uh, humans and pigs into a fetus that survived, I think I read, four weeks. Maybe four days, but that seems four weeks it was. <clears throat> now, one thing I just want to point out that um, that sounds disgusting, of course, for me, from my point of perspective. You might not agree. Um, I don't see it as a benefit to, you know, oh, we can sort of replace our organs and stuff. No, we can just eat healthy food and stay healthy and be more uh, clear in our heads. You know, take what we are giving already and make the best out of that and not just patch up ourselves by being disgusting towards um, uh, other creatures and ourselves. But anyway, um, for me, it's all publicity stunts, you know, ways to get funding. Also, I think they call it artificial intelligence just because that makes it sound more advanced. Um, you know, we are impressed that these guys who play the game Go uh, lost to computers. And we think, oh, the next step is for the computers to take over, you know, everything. But there are still automatic intelligence giving a path. They, they, are, they have been given a path by humans. To a certain direction to perform specific um, stuff and even if they improvise it's always in the sort of the realm of what they are supposed to be doing Nick Bostrom in his book super intelligence says um, he mentions the paperclip experiment basically if you have an, a machine and um, it's connected to the internet and it makes paper clips you know we can just I just gonna use that example because that's the original example and uh, it makes paper clips and something comes along um, and hinders it from making paper clips maybe pension funds or humanitarian crisis so it sort of just connects itself to the internet launches missiles destroys the world from humans and just takes over all the factory creates robots makes paper clips then the earth gets too small for that paperclip factory so it makes the whole galaxy not galaxy the solar system into a paperclip factory and so on and so on so it, it just gets into an automatic process 
without any sort of conscious, consciousness about itself. And Nick Wustrom also said that, you know, computing power is not, is, is not that mesmerizing. Basically, it's, it's a Disney park without kids, so there's no self-awareness, no nothing. Um, <clears throat> so I think in many of these cases, there is a sort of um, positional funding um, ground to be breaking. You know, you talk about artificial intelligence, you talk about the benefits. Someone else, like Elon Musk, comes up and talks about the threats. And I'm on his side, basically. But still, he's also into this business. He's making um, this startup, this company. He's made several companies. One is OpenAI, which is sort of um, discovering or researching in the sort of safety mechanisms we can have with artificial intelligence slash art automatic intelligence and how uh, that should be sort of open uh, sourced because it's too dangerous to have one uh, entity controlling it. And remember, you know, it could be some guy with a computer or a group of 10 people in North Korea. Just think about that. Uh, and I recommend reading uh, his book, um, Super Intelligence by Nick Bustrom, as I already mentioned him. Um, so, so Elon Musk has a finger in this game, really, and uh, he's making this sort of uh, neural implant business. And his friends, Larry Page at Google, you know, they're all having different approaches to this. Um, and one, one idea about this, for this takeover, as it, you know, we always think about the film Terminator, where we have machines coming, you know, and like trying to destroy us physically. It doesn't have, it, it's, it's pro if it happens that way in that dystopian sense, it won't be in that way. It will more be like, um, you know, spraying chemtrails of nanobots that have a, um, a microgram of some extreme poison, and then when everybody has, has it in their system, you know, click a, click a button or send a code and everybody's dead because that poison was depleted in every human being. But there will always be some humans that survive anyway. So uh, films that talk about this, which are good, are um, Transcendence with Johnny Depp and um, Mm, Automata? No, 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 no. Yeah, that's also a good film, but what was the film I saw at the film festival? I'll leave the links below, and they deal with this, you know, and uh, in, the, in the movie that I forgot the name of right now, I have it, Ex Machina, Ex Machina, maybe it's pronounced. Um, it's about, it's more software-based, you know, and, and gives you an ID. Now, this topic is so vast, I, you know, I can't bring up everything I have in my head or, you know, discuss from every perspective, but I just want to mention another thing to sort of critically look at this. You know, back in the <clears throat> days, we were fearing God, God's judgments. How are we going to prepare for God's judgment, you know? Will we pray with one hand, two hands, one finger, two fingers, you know, silly things like that. So now we have this idea that the computer, the machine, the artificial inte uh, intelligence will be sort of something that surpasses humanity, that becomes our judgment, or if we are nice and sort of pray in the right way, get the right implants and, you know, stay sort of meek and humble, we might incor be incorporated into that and be together with the sort of uh, future, the forthcoming automatic intelligence or uh, artificial intelligence. So there, there, there's a big, um, big reason to consider this to be a sort of neo-religious movement. And remember that every technolog technological age, you know, um, the steam engine, everything, the rifle, the tank, everything brought along like this sort of dystopian um, ideas of it. I mean, in the 50s, you had uh, the ideas of how we would live today. <clears throat> And, uh, and every, every technology just brings forth various ideas. And of course, we're not to take this, you know, just by shrug it, shrugging it off our shoulders. But um, there, is a, there is a reason to, you know, just realize 
what is the actual human essential state of mind that interprets these movements, these technological advancements. Um, and from that you see a pattern, you know, you see the pattern of what, you know, religion was back in the days and still is in some places. And um, what this sort of scientism, this sort of belief in the software, in the binary code, in the automatic intelligence, and so on. And I mean, yeah, it, it might cause troubles, you know, just some machine running amok and just launching all sorts of uh, nuclear weapons. But um, at the same time, as long as we are not really on the clear about what consciousness is, you know, is it unique to us? Is it individual? Is it out there and we are just receivers like an antenna sort of? Like Rupert Sheldrake uh, talks about it. Um, we can just speculate and the more um, hype there is around something, the more money is involved in something. The more people talk about something there's always a profit to be made. And of course with that comes development. And that's what leads me to believe that there's also a basic sinister potential, potential in all of this with implants, of course, cashless society and, uh, and such. I mean, I enjoy walking around and not having, you know, cash with me all the time. But there's a limit. There's a limit to where we become so efficient that we don't really love life or, you know, promote the love of life. Is it really that important to have drones, you know, delivering something you bought from Amazon? I don't know. It might, kind of, it might come off as handy, but we, in all of these sort of news, you have to look at it from, from, from all sides. Everything from the, the mixing of humans and pigs in fetuses of course there will be a result it's been done before you know in secret in soviet and in you know i mean a lot of there's lots of classified projects with that and uh, there's no p potential for that species spe uh, you know monster to sort of survive and all these arguments that sort of tell us that we need to mix humans and pigs and rats and all that just to save our organs, just to stay healthy. Come on, people. Let's just eat the, the God-given, I mean God, you know, like universal given food we have, the, the lovely sort of sun rays we have. Like, let's stay healthy from within. We already have every possibility. You know, it's, it's always about this sort of divide and, divide and conquer, this sort of trick and sell you something, you know, trick away your health. Put lots of stuff in the vaccines, in your food, and then make you focus on something else that you need and have to pay for. Uh, at the meantime, health and just, you know, being human is a very simple thing. Um, yeah, there, there was some thoughts about this. Um, I'm, I'm very interested in this topic and uh, I've written, written two papers on it. Human rights will be in a in a sort of situation where um, genetic modification becomes um, uh, mandatory, or how genetic modification of fetuses, embryos, and and so on will look like in the future. But at the same time, I'm I'm in a sense biased here. I believe in the uniqueness of our soul, or the sort of universal soul which we are all antennas to. I'm standing behind the tree so the wind doesn't hit too hard on the on the recording. Um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, look look up these things. Uh, there are very good articles coming out these days. And Elon Musk announced that he will be releasing something within a week or or so, ten days. Um, really interesting area. But you know, in all of this, just stay open and simple and human. Like look around. You have all everything you need. To be thriving on this planet this amazing planet which might be the only one like this in the whole universe 
until someone says hello, I will say goodbye, take care and all the best. Ciao.